Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old master bather, Scott Bradfield. And the old master bather's car uh, parakeet, Dodo the Wonder Parakeet. Lucky's off hiding somewhere because it's very hot. It's getting, getting well, we're, we're not as hot as the rest of the country, but uh, we're, we're getting there. And uh, we're having a, doing a very quick one today about um, sort of the, uh, sort of basically, I'm just going to show you a bunch of cool books. That's basically all it is. And it's good. We're going to talk mainly about Fritz Leiber. We talked a bit about him last last week. We did like a roundup of vintage paperbacks, and he was one of the books. This is Conjure Wife by Fritz Leiber. I think it's his first novel. I believe it was serialized in the 40s, and then then it was reprinted as a book in the early 50s. I think it was serialized originally in a magazine. But don't quote, don't ever quote, never quote the masturbator. Never quote a masturbator. That's all. That's that's another rule of thumb to go by. But uh, I read this as a kid, and I reread it just to see if it was as good as I remembered it. And it's, it's as good as I remembered it. I will say a few quick things about Fritz Leiber. Um, we got a number of people wrote in after I mentioned his book. One of his early co one of his collections, um, it was called Shadows with Eyes, Shadows with Eyes, and it was just a Ballantine collection of five or six stories. He was a pretty remarkable writer, really a lot of fun. He was, as a young man, he was a friend of Lovecraft's. And they, they, they corresponded quite a bit, like a lot of young writers who, who were enamored of Lovecraft's work. Lovecraft was incredibly, uh, he, had, he had a lot, of, he was very forthcoming in, in, to write letters. He, would, he loved to write letters and he loved to correspond with people. It seemed to be his greatest uh, uh, friendships were through, through writing letters. He wrote millions and millions of letters, uh, millions and millions of words of letters. And Fritz Leiber was one of the young writers who, who admired his work. He is, his father was an actor. He st you'll still see him. And you'll, if you look up the Wikipedia piece, it'll show you some pictures of his father, who's, I forget his father's name, but he was in lots of silent movies. And Fritz Leiber himself did some acting. I met Fritz Leiber when I was about 14 or 15. I think I've told this story about how I worked at a SFWA uh, conference in Oakland. When I was 14 or 15, my friend Quinn Yarborough got me in there and let me meet all these writers. And I, I met Fritz Leiber. He was sitting at a table. He was, I think he had some, near, some serious problems with drugs and alcohol at different periods of his life. Excuse me if I'm incorrect, but I think that was true. And at the time, I was about 14 or 15. He was sitting at a table. He was nominated for a, a novella that, uh, for a nebula that year, and I think he won. I can't remember. He had the biggest head I ever saw on a human being. He looked, his head was just huge. He was a handsome man, but a very, very big head, huge, very tall man who was sitting down when I met him. And I'm pretty sure he was taller than I was when I was standing up and he was sitting down. He was kind of slumped over and he looked, when I met him, he looked stoned out of his head. I think he came in and out of uh, use, use, his use, usage problems uh, in his life. And he writes about it in some of his better books, like Our Lady of Darkness, which we'll talk about in a bit. Anyway, I don't know a lot about Fritz Leiber's work, except as a kid I read him. I read him intermittently over my life, and I've started to reread some of his work late recently. And I do enjoy his work quite a bit. I just thought I'd show you some cool books, and I'll talk a little bit about Conjure Wife. So this, I bought this years ago. It was from Gallant in the UK. It's called Ship of Shadows. It was a retrospective collection of stories. It was limited edition, so only 500 copies. And I thought you might like to see, that's his signature. So I had a signed copy of a Fritz Leiber book, which I think is kind of cool to have. I don't know anything about this. This is called The Dealings of Daniel Keserich. And uh, it's got a quote by Harlan Ellison, who was a very good reader. I, whatever you think about Harlan as a writer, he was a very good reader. He loved good writing. And as a quote says, for anyone who loves great literature, Fritz Leiber walked on water. It's pretty strong. And I think this was a lost novel from Fritz Leiber's youth. The Dealings of Daniel Keserich. And I think it was published by Tor after, possibly after his death. He's best known, I guess, for his Fawford and the Grey Mauser stories. He wrote a series of these books. Most of them are in cool ace paperbacks. I still have, I think I have all the originals for most of these. Swords and Deviltry, I think that's the first ones. I, I liked these, but as a, as a teenager, I didn't. I wasn't wild about them. I found them a little... Don't even come out if you want. Um, I wasn't as wild about them as I was about his horror and his science fiction. So he wrote horror novels, kind of Lovecraftian, or, or versions of Lovecraft. Dodo, come on. Come on. Shush. Come on. Come here and shush. 
And then he wrote the sword. These he coined the term sword and sorcery for the Fawford and Gray Mauser stories. And uh, one of the most interesting things I found out about Fritz Leiber in the past week or two. Excuse me. I'm gonna go get you. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on outside. You don't need to make noise. You can come out. Come on. <clears throat> Why don't you go play your toys? Shut up. Okay, we're back to this. The thing I. Uh, learned about Fritz Leiber from looking at the Wikipedia page is that the people who created Dungeons and Dragons actually kind of bought the rights to the the kind of fantasy world of these 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 books and gave him a lot of money. So I, I really like Dungeons and Dragons. I never played Dungeons and Dragons. I had no idea about it. But if you're a Dungeons and Dragons fan, you may know of <coughs> Fawford and the Great Mauser. And they also reprinted, I think they reprinted many of these uh, these books, but I don't know anything about that personally. So I have the old pre Dungeons and Dragon editions, Swords Against Riz Wizardry, and Dodo. You're gonna, you may get yourself in a little trouble. There's the book we talked about, Shadows with Eyes. Okay, it's time to get out the cattle prod. You want, you want to sit here, or do you want to get down? <clears throat> Here's another cool book he did. I think that's a paperback original, Tarzan, and the Valley of Gold. Fritz Leiber did a Tarzan novel, and I haven't read that one. Here's some more. Here's some more Fritz Leiber, The Fawford and Gray Mausers. That's the only no I think that's the only novel of The Fawford and the Gray Mauser, which I haven't actually. I couldn't quite get through that. I like his. I like some of the stories a lot, and I'm not as wild about the Fawford stuff. This is one of the best. If you follow this series, I love this Ballantine series from my youth, the Ballantine Best of Science Fiction Writers. And Fritz Leiber was one that, uh, they, they, this is one of the best ones. I just love the cover, and the stories are great. This is a good way to read his great, his great science fiction stories, which range from kind of kind of strange amalgams of horror and, and fantasy and science fiction, and a lot of social satire. So there's a lot of comic novels, kind of a lot, a lot of satires on, the, on America. Um, and he was a fairly, I think, a fairly liberal intelligence and a, anti-war intelligence. I have not read The Spectre's Haunting Texas, but it looks like it's a takeoff on Texas. <laughs> so it's, I can understand that. Uh, this is another one I never read, but I just I, I will read it someday. It's supposed to be a science fiction take uh, satire on publishing. I don't know anything more about it than The Silver Eggheads. Um, here's, the, here's the best stuff. I still think his best work are the short story collections and these beautiful... Dodo? It's not funny anymore. Pale of Air. I remember that story vividly. It's about some future where the world's f super cold and they, everyone's living in these underground bunkers and air is, all the oxygen is crystallized and frozen and some you have to go out every day and get a bucket of air, a pail of air. Um, it's unfortunately, I hope, let's hope it's not as prescient as, as it probably is. The Night of the Wolf. You know, I, have, I haven't read... I read most of these stories in different editions of different collections, and the short stories are really his best his best work. Um, he's he won a Hugo Award for The Wanderer. I re I read this maybe for the first time about ten years ago, and I enjoyed it. It's sort of the end of the world told from a bunch of different viewpoints, and it's the most kind of non it's it's the more literary novel because it's mainly a character study of all these different people before this end of the world. Um, these are cool books to have if you're a Fritz Leiber fan. These are the daw daughter of these books of different writers. The book of Fritz Leiber and the second book of Fritz Leiber, which contain really good uh, samples of all the different types of work he did, uh, including some of his science essays. So he worked he worked for a magazine, I forget the name of it, and he wrote a lot of science essays. And almost everything he wrote was a very, very intelligent guy. Um... Here's another book I just picked up about five, six years ago, and I haven't read it yet. It's called The Ghost Light. It's a late-life retrospective collection with a long, almost 100-page, well, 50-page, 60-page autobiographical essay, which may be the closest to a biography we have on the on the great and fascinating Fritz Leiber. Okay? All right, Toto. I swear to God, she's going to. Gonna make a stew, make parakeet stew one of these days, Dodo. This is one of my favorite horror novels. It's set in San Francisco, Our Lady of Darkness. I don't think I've rarely met anyone who's who's read this book. I, in fact, I ran into a guy the other day. We were talking about Liber, and he remembered this book vividly too. It's about a writer like Fritz Liber, 
whose wife has just died. And I think it was sort of, sounds like it was very, very intimately based on Liber and his wife who, who died before him and some of the drug problems. And about a guy who <clears throat> who's starting to notice this kind of map of San, San Francisco. He uses San Francisco really well in this book. And I read it twice and I want to reread it again. Our Lady of Darkness it was also published as The Pale Brown Thing, which is a kind of brilliant title and a kind of creepier title. Uh, this is another one I haven't read, The Green Millennium. I don't know if that's good. It's probably good. I don't think I've read a bad book by Fritz Leiber. It has a collection of stories called Night Monsters. On, it's those ace doubles. And I remember some of these stories vividly. Uh, the Black Gondolier was good. And there's one up called Midnight in the Mirror World, which is one of the most vivid and the most memorable horror stories I've ever read about a guy who glimpses who's in one of those, you know, those department store mirrors where you have three mirrors and you can see infinitely in the back. He's got this dressing mirror and he sees this creature way out in the distant reflections. And, and every day that creature comes closer and closer in one of the reflections. This is a really brilliant story. This is a late paperback reprint of his first book. I think I had I had the first Arkham edition, Arkham House edition. His first book was published as Night's Black Agents, a bunch of short stories. One of the first, the first published Foffer and Gray Mauser story. Some brilliant horror stories: The Smoke Ghost, uh, The Automatic Pistol, The Girl with the Hungry Eyes. Some of his most famous short stories, horror stories, are in this. And uh, it's it's any edition of that book is worth having. This one I loved. I'm just going to show you a bunch of cool books. This is You're All Alone. I read this as a teenager as well. I think that that title story, it's a long novella, was was changed or altered or expanded to become something called The Sinful Ones. Don't quote me as, as usual. I love the original novella. It's a great idea. It's about the idea that the world is a kind of clockwork machine, and we're all just part of this clockwork, and we all do what the clock tells us to do. And a guy who accidentally steps out of the clock, and the whole world just keeps moving on around him. Really cool story. Still remember it vividly. Um, I don't. I remember the big time. It's it's one of his most famous science fiction novels. It's set in some futuristic uh, space station. I, I I don't remember it too well, and I wasn't as wild about it as some of these. I did love Gather Darkness when I read it. It's another one of these kind of mix of futuristic science fiction and, and kind of the horror witchcraft world. Anyway, that's just a bunch of bunch of books. I I really think are cool to have besides reading. And I just say a few words about Conjure Wife. This is one of the best horror novels. I'm, I'm not a big horror fan. This is one of the best horror novels I've ever read. I remembered it great, greatly enjoying it as a 14, 15 year old. Always wanted to reread it. And I picked it up two nights ago and didn't put it down. I was up till three. It was one of those books, you two or three in the morning. The first chapter he sets up his story really well. I don't know if you know the story. Conjure Wife is about, looks at the world as if women, all women are basically witches. They don't tell us, but they all are witches. And they all share. See, you know, when women go sit, go by themselves at a party, they're talking about witchcraft. And most of the women, most of the women have a divided soul about it. They, they talk about it, they kid about it, but they don't totally believe they're witches. And they believe in the rational world that their husbands believe in. But basically, they are capable of being witches. And if they want to be, they can do good or bad with this evil, with this, this, these powers. She's, the, the central character is a, is, a, is a professor of psychology who studies superstition and how people believe superstition. So the whole to story is told from the viewpoint of this guy who rationalizes away all the, the magic, all the possible things that could be happening. And his wife... In the first chapter, he finds a bunch of witchcraft stuff in her drawer, which he shouldn't have gone through, but he finds it. And she comes home, and they talk. And the whole first chapter is him convincing her to throw away all the special magical charms that she has set up to protect him from the other women at this university where, they, where he teaches. And the whole chapter is him slowly getting her to burn stuff and throw things away. And the whole time you're going, don't do it. Don't burn all this stuff. Don't get rid of this stuff. And he gets totally, Liber really winds you up. And then at the end of it, the wife sort of says, okay, maybe I am crazy. I'm glad we got rid of it. And she seems quite happy. And of course, the whole book talks about what happens after. And as soon as he burns the last of the charms, all these horrible things start happening to him. It's a really fun, smart book. 
Everywhere in Fritz Leiber's, even his horror fiction, there's a kind of rationalistic side. The horror and the science fiction really do but represent these two sort of spheres of Leiber's interests. And the, the entire story is to, told from the viewpoint of, well, it's probably just psychology. And that it's probably just this kind of weird uh, psychological infection that has gotten in, in our culture. And he never to goes down on either side, but he allows for both of those kind of worlds to work together, which is kind of what happens in a lot of his books. I mean, Ship of Shadows is about a spaceship somewhere on the super in the in the in the universe traveling around, and, and it's filled with warlocks and, and uh, normal people or, or non non supernatural people and supernatural people. Anyway, very different writer, a lot of fun. He's there's something for everybody in here if you like kind of genre fiction. I went on too long about this, but if you don't read, if you read one of these books, I would definitely say Conjure Wife is a fun horror story, which will kind of creep you out, and it's not really gruesome or anything like that. It's not, it's not a grotesque or gruesome novel, but it's a very intellectually stimulating, and cre it'll creep you out. It's a couple of passages will really creep you out. All right, take care, stay safe, bye.